vinyl record sales have gone up by over 100%. The total of 780,000 being sold in 2013. There's a surprise as the decline of the CD continues. Why is everyone going crazy for vinyl all of a sudden? And what makes an iconic and collectible record sleeve? Please welcome the man who knows all there is to know about vinyl records, Simon Kinsler. <laughs> So, why this resurgence? Because, in theory, the sound isn't as good as it is on the CD. They go, and things like that. Well, they say that, but a lot of people are now saying, actually, the sound of vinyl is better. It, it's warmer. Uh, another reason why people are, are buying vinyl is because 25% of people are buying them for the artwork. It, yeah. it, it's affordable art. Are you fond of them, Mike, or did you think they are of well, yesteryear? Well, I think the artwork was wonderful, actually. Yeah. You know, they were possessions. You know, yes. that was your album. You wouldn't go and just throw it away and reboot it, you know, from your hard drive. It was something you owned and you kept in your bedroom or your house, you know, it was possession. Now it's in the air, online at a different time, really. And there seems to be no sort of love of CDs in the same way that was love of these it's things, is there? The CD just too small as a sort of bit of art. Yeah. Most expensive vinyl record ever sold? Well, there's a, a track by a guy called Frank Wilson, who was actually a songwriter for Motown, and he made a record in the mid-60s called Do I Love You. Uh, it's a great no Northern Soul record. And only uh, two copies apparently exist. And the last one sold a couple of years back for £25,000. Just repeat that title and people can go to their attic. <laughs> <laughs> Do I Love You, Frank Wilson. <laughs> now, you brought with you some which are iconic. I mean, even people who work necessarily into David Bowie would know that picture, wouldn't they? It's, do, do, yeah. We've got that. Uh, absolutely. These are real collectibles, are I mean, yeah, this is, uh, this is basically a very famous image. Uh, the photography by Brian Duffy. The idea behind it was uh, David Bowie had a, a fixation on a ring that Elvis Presley used to wear, uh, which said TCB on it and had a lightning bolt, uh, which he saw as taking care of business. Uh, <laughs> and there was also the photographer, there was a rice cooker in the corner that had that same lightning bolt logo on it, and that's just how it came about, simple as that. There wasn't that much thought behind it. So, a good condition one of these. Is it worth anything, are they? Uh, not unless it's maybe some sort of special Italian issue or something like that, but a cop cop normal copy like that. Didn't sell many when it first came out, but it went on to sell millions and millions. Right, it's a bit just a lovely thing to have. Is it a favourite nice. of yours, Mike? Do you like that one? I've got, that's a great, that's a classic, yeah. iconic one, absolutely, yeah. yeah. And, yeah, the class. Now, that's, this is probably the most iconic photograph that appears on a, on a record of all time. It was taken by Penny Smith in 1979 at a concert in New York. Uh, and you'd think that this was a big euphoric end to the concert, but it actually it was a concert that wasn't going very well because it was seated <laughs> and the band weren't getting into it. And this is Paul Simonon getting really frustrated <laughs> uh, at the end of the gig. You ever done that with yours? Smashed his, uh, no, smashed I'm his too face. Careful. Out. <laughs> <laughs> um, but also, the interesting thing about that with another tie to Elvis Presley there is that the typography, which is done by Ray Lowry, who used to do the illustrations for Punch and Private Eye, oh. uh, he did all the typography on that. Uh, and it's a homage to the first Elvis Presley album. Yeah. Uh, Pink Floyd here. This this is very iconic too, Well, isn't it? again, the most, probably the most iconic album sleeve of all time. It's by one of the most famous designers, uh, Storm Torgerson. Uh, and basically, he realised that the Pink Floyd light show had never been celebrated before, and, and that was the idea behind the lights. And the prism was an idea of the ambition of the lyrics in the album. But you'd think, like, there was a lot of time and thought went into choosing the album cover. Mm. Apparently, there was four different designs, one of which was uh, a picture of the Silver Surfer from Marvel Comics. Uh, but the band walked into the room, went, no, 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 yeah, love that one. And well, that was it, the most iconic album. Two more here to do briefly. Michael Jackson in a white jacket, which I gather he borrowed from the photographer. Indeed. I'll spin through these, because I know I'll look at a couple sure, of bikes. Sure, absolutely. Well. And the Beatles Abbey Road, again, surely oh, one of the most oh, famous record well, covers all, ever. all the Beatles albums are iconic record covers. This one was actually Paul McCartney's idea. They took six photos on the day. This was the only one when... Uh, when the, they're all in step. It, it, but they're all yeah, walking at the yeah. same time. Ian McMillan, uh, who took the uh, photograph, um, said it, it, this was the best one. Let me... You've got a couple of Genesis ones there. Absolutely. Mike, were you fond of these? Did you like them? Or they do were, you get no, any they, say? No, or? no, they, they, were, they were, I think, all quite original. I mean, you're always, each yeah. time you try something that looks a bit different. Trick um, of the tail. That, that was insta drawing. instantly uh, done by the same design studio, I believe, Mike, that uh, did Pink Floyd. It was, it was uh, Poe and Storm Hypnosis, yeah. yeah. And they were a great, great team. I mean, uh, Storm, who was, uh, passed away, actually. Indeed. Just exactly. passed away. Was a wonderful artist, but he could drive you crazy, you know. Yeah. He'd say, yeah. which one do you want? And I'd go that, and he went, no, no, it's that one, you know. Oh, <laughs> so, but he was a I don't mind if you've seen this cover before. Oh. It's an alternative Genesis cover to that same album, Trick of the Town. From England, or? It's Italian. 
uh, the challenges used to do their, their own unofficial There you are, feast your eyes on those. Yes. 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 Bootlegged like Italian. At the uh, bus stops. <laughs> <laughs> My thanks to Simon Kinsler and Mike Rutherford. Thank you both very much. Thank you. <laughs> so the